Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to go over another approach to propagating uncertainty, which is actually very easy, very effective, and very general. So the notion is this. I'll give an example. Suppose you wanted to calculate the density of a disk of metal of some kind. You don't know. Maybe you don't even know what kind of metal it is, but you can measure it, and you know it's a, it's a round disk, so it has a certain diameter, a certain thickness. Think of a coin, maybe and you measure its mass. But the problem is you have a inherent limitation on the precision of the measurement. So you can only measure the diameter to within a millimeter, and you can only measure the thickness to within a millimeter, and you can only measure the mass to within a tenth of a gram. Now, you know how to calculate density. It's mass divided by volume, and you know all about geometry, so you can you guys can work that out. You get a density that's expressed like this. So you go and jump in and you calculate away. You put in the diameter, you put in the thickness, you put in the mass, you calculate the volume, you divide the mass by the volume, and you get a density of 9.41 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, if you go by, uh, you know, a rule like Sometimes uh, students learn rules about significant figures or something like that. Uh, and so you might look at these numbers and say, well, that's 2, and that's 1, and that's 2. So th because this is only one significant figure, then I should count on the 9, But because I got one significant figure here. Um, but that's completely useless, because it, it, here's the thing. The uncertainty in these values produces uncertainty in the result through uh, complicated process whereby the inputs can vary uh, over the range of possible values. Um, you notice that the diameter comes in squared, so that makes it complicated. And and so the whole business of that, uh, if you click on this link down here in, in this notebook, you'll come to the uh, whole description of propagation of uncertainty that I've provided you guys that uses calculus to work out the relationship between the uncertainty in the values that you measure and the uncertainty in the thing that you calculate. And that there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you just want to quick and well actually I don't wouldn't even call this dirty. This is this is quick and good, right? This is a, actually an excellent numerical technique. It doesn't give you any analytical insight into where the uncertainty is coming from, but it allows you to easily calculate it, and so that's useful. So the idea is this. I generate a bunch of Monte Carlo diameters, Monte Carlo thicknesses, and Monte Carlo masses that are the measured values plus a random distribution with the standard deviation equal to the uncertainty in the, in the values that I measure. So I'm just adding normal distributions uh, of uh, diameter, thickness, and mass, and I'm calculating a normal dist or a calculating a Monte Carlo distribution of volumes and a Monte Carlo distribution of densities that are produced by these Monte Carlo measurements. So I'm basically simulating the uncertainty of the data in a bunch of Monte Carlo trials and then using that to calculate the distribution of densities that I'm likely to end up with. And if you do that, you see the following possibly shocking result, which is that, yeah, you got a density of around 9, but with those uncertainties, you could easily get a density somewhere between 7 and all the way up to 12 or 13, maybe. Um, so you, if you just get unlucky with a particular measurement. And so that's uh, very useful. I, I notice it's not a simple normal distribution either. It's because the the thickness comes in like 1 over t, the diameter comes in like 1 over d squared, so it's a complicated process. But the Monte Carlo technique, where you just calculate the volume and the density, notice this formula that I used here to calculate volume and density, it's exactly the same formula we used up here. I simply substituted the Monte Carlo diameter and the Monte Carlo thickness and the Monte Carlo mass into the formula. It's Monte Carlo diameter, Monte Carlo thickness, Monte Carlo mass. Everything else is exactly the same. And I get this beautiful mathematical distribution, this sort of numerical estimate of the uncertainty. I can simply calculate the mean. Uh, to get a 95% confidence interval, I'm going to take two times the standard deviation. And that's not. this is not really a normal distribution, so that's a little bit dicey, but at least gives you an idea. So 
we really don't know the density very well at all. It's somewhere between 9 minus 3.8 and 9, or 9.7 minus 3.8 and 9.7 plus 3.8. If you want to include 95% of the Monte Carlo trials, you're going to have to have a range of density something like that. You can look at this thing and see that, you know, it's going to be somewhere between 7 and 13, but that's, that's really about all you know. So if you want to improve the situation, you're going to have to tighten down the uh, the uncertainties in these measurements. I, obviously, the main culprit here is going to be that thickness. You've got to do something about uh, improving the precision of that thickness measurement in order to improve the. Um, actually, let's just just for fun, um, we could we could do that. What if we said the thickness is actually known to 0 0.01 instead of? Uh, oops, I got to start at the beginning here. If I rerun the calculation. And now look, that really tightened things down. Just changing the thickness precision to a tenth of a millimeter instead of a tenth of a centimeter, I'm now down to 9.4 plus or minus 1.2. Okay, um, so that gives you an idea. Of course, I don't want to leave it in there like that because that's that ruins the punchline. So we'll leave it like that. But anyway, I hope you guys get that. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and we'll see you soon.